This is 21st Century Reformation at 21stcr.org. So here we are again, Anthony. And, uh, I love these short letters of Paul, and uh, we worked on uh, Ephesians yep. last time. I enjoyed that a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is a parallel book in a lot of ways, Very parallel much so. writing. Same uh, time of writing. Yeah. Themes are obviously parallel. Yes, right? yes. So one throws light on the other, and it's important to keep well, them. It's nice parallel. to read them together and, yes. and, uh, and to consider them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I like it a lot. The fact that he's in prison is amazing, isn't it? Uh, yeah. To be in prison and as be as upbeat yeah. as he is, is quite remarkable. So, um uh, uh, I, I've often said if I was in prison, my letters would not sound like Paul's. Yeah. I, would, I, would be, I would probably have been uh, crying the blues and, and just begging people pray to get me out of yes. prison. I don't, you know, but yes. Paul, he's, he's very yes. calm, I think, very wonderful. Well, the, um, I'm just thinking how fortunate people um, like the folks at Colossae mm -hmm. and Ephesus and Laodicea and yes. other, but how fortunate they were to have Paul yes. caring for them Absolutely. as much as he did to write them. I mean, yes. these writings, yes. I mean, he did not have word processors. Uh, these writings took a lot of time and effort and energy. Isn't that amazing? But he had to care for those people. Yes. and. Uh, and so, yes. and how fortunate they were to have yes. that care and that yes. wisdom of God. And coming here to we them. are reading them two thousand years later. Isn't that something? So it comes down to us. Yeah. But look at the technology we've got. Oh yeah. Look at the speeding up of the process. You know, with fifty translations on our laptops, that's searching every Greek word if necessary. Well, that's Commentaries right. galore from Germany, from France, from England. It's, it's from amazing. America. It's astonishing. Yeah. I think people don't realize the increase yeah. in knowledge. But that puts a responsibility on us to get it right. You know, from yes, all yes. the denominational surely confusion. We can, that surely we, we can make some progress here. Right? Make some progress? <laughs> that's, that's right. Will that help? With all the advantages yes, we have. But, sure. but, uh, but here we have Paul still. I think surely that's the work and the wisdom of God that yeah. these letters uh, that were written by, by this great, uh, mm -hmm. wonderful man of God. I'd yeah. love, love to have known him uh, yeah. and uh, personally. Uh, someday I'll have that opportunity, I hope. But, uh, the, uh, but for for those things to come down to us, we're very blessed. And we ought to put effort and uh, personal energy yes. into yes. Uh, wanting to understand them yes. the way that Paul meant for them to be Absolutely. understood. You know. Which shouldn't be beyond the wit of people to achieve, you think. I yeah. mean, was the Bible really written to produce this sort of argumentation? Everything is a, quote, problem out there. <laughs> yeah. Mass of denominations, yeah. every Greek word is a problem. <laughs> yeah. I don't think they had that in mind when they wrote it. They it were couldn't keen, have been that difficult. No. <laughs> they were keen to speak of the one God of Jesus, yeah. of God of Israel, yeah. that's not yeah. very hard, yeah. of the kingdom of God yeah. coming and yeah. our part in that future kingdom yeah. that we're preparing. While we get so uh, caught up in the details of parsing, mm -hmm. as it were, uh, we often are overlooking the, the great messages and the, the big picture yeah. of what the yeah. apostle was saying. And I think it's helpful if we mention that much of scholarship exhausts itself. <laughs> trying to decide how did Mark edit this or that? Where did he get his stuff? How, did, how was the editorial? Pro that doesn't matter. What is key is what does it say as we have it in the canon of Scripture That's to us right. today? That's right. But there's a very great tendency for human nature to avoid actually making touch with Jesus by yeah. saying, well, let's discuss all these learning things. Well, right. how did this we come spend from? all of our time yes. in the peripheral uh, end of things. Wearing and ourselves out. <laughs> Talking about the Jesus tradition rather, rather than, than about Jesus. Than right? Jesus. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's not that hard. Is it? God, I think, <laughs> uh, is much kinder to us than that. That's he right. he yeah. has not given us something that it would take people uh, eons of, uh, of study and parsing so. and, right. and working. He's yeah. given us something that for, I think, uh, just good, honest-hearted folks. Yes. If they look at it and if they begin to, to get on the right track with it, it flows. It, it works, flows. and we can yes. begin to understand these things just yes. as Paul meant for them to be understood yes. uh, by the Colossians and That's others. Right. Yeah, tradition has been the great barrier, hasn't it? Yeah, what we, it surely has. What we've assumed and yeah. taken on board as church is quite obviously wrong in some areas. So our, our general thesis would be from the second century, the influence of Greek philosophy oh, my land, yes. changed the nature of the faith. Yeah. And then those councils, cruel as they were, yeah. that anathematized mm. everybody who didn't agree. I mean, that's a terrible Terrible thing. stuff, yeah. It's kind of the uh, dark side of Christianity Absolutely. in a way, unfortunately. I, 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 yeah. I hate that. But, um, wow, but the beautiful side is this wonderful uh, uh, writings uh, that, that 
that we're seeing in our New Testament. Yeah. If we begin to just take that in. Right. And, and I think uh, rightfully uh, look to God in our prayers. Uh, you know, Same. Jesus instructs Same. his disciples to, yeah. uh, you know, uh, to pray as uh, saying, uh, Our Father which is in heaven, hallowed be thy name, uh, but give us this day our daily bread. Mm-hmm. If we would ask for daily bread, I would think we would also, it, God would hear us well if we're asking for understanding and lighting His Word. Yeah. Why not? Uh, why shouldn't right. we be asking for that? Uh, oh, yeah. And don't put God out of the equation in no. His own Word, but bring right. Him into it and say... You know. And a laugh at the fact that we could possibly have been deceived. <laughs> yes. I'm actually reminded uh, of your words. Uh, uh, I'm reminded of Tom Wright. Bishop Wright is the, one of the most famous evangelicals. And he has this to say about being fooled. We have been fooled, not for the first time, says Bishop Wright, by a view of death and life beyond, in which the really important thing is the soul. We've uh-huh. been fooled by that. Well, that's very interesting, Bishop Wright. In what areas could we have been fooled by church? A strong language. Mm-hmm. So we must approach our Bible study with an openness as Bereans, mm-hmm. then to consider what is it in our own tradition that is holding us back from seeing what Surely. Paul actually said. Surely. Uh, I've often said it, it's not truth, it's difficult. No. The difficulty lies in yes. all of our own traditions, our, traditions. Our, our own personal spiritual exactly. baggage exactly. that we're carrying along yes. uh, with us through life. I take him for granted, and, as and James it, Dunn says, I like that. I take right. him for granted. Well, we know that God is three or two. We know that Jesus and the Father are the same person. Yeah. Well, wait a minute. Let's, let's look at that first. Yes. yes. That let's begin could, there. Yeah, and that's where right. the examination yeah, might begin. <laughs> yeah. I love the uh, the Bible quote that you've mentioned yes. before about uh, you know yes. uh, his prayer that yes. oh God if I am deceived, deceived then yes. let me be undeceived send somebody to undeceive send someone me. to undeceive me <laughs> yes. and then he wrote his whole book uh, we should name the book they didn't teach me this in church <laughs> yes yes <laughs> and he his whole career was radicalized you know by <laughs> his exposure to a new set of suggestions and yes actually yes. simplified everything for him yes. and he's eternally grateful for that uh, i found that uh, the more i understand the truth the simpler the truth is i think so but the yes. more complex the errors right. are but truth itself uh, right. As I say, I don't think truth is that difficult. It's the error that gets in our way. The errors Excellent. are the problem uh, that right. for us. So we must define God. We must define Jesus, yes. the Son of God, and we must define the gospel. Yes. And yes. Those things in my Church of England background were missing. No. We didn't mm. define those terms. Yes. How many terms can you misunderstand in any document before the whole thing becomes right. a muddle right. and nobody reads it anymore? It, they give it's, up. It's actually all in the definitions, isn't it? It, it must it, have definitions. It, that's right. Because we, and that's what's confusing to the public. Yeah. I think everybody from various denominations. We're using the same yeah. words and yeah. same language many times. That's right. But one person is defining it very differently from someone else. Just and it becomes a totally different thought, right. a whole different process. Just like if I come to you as a Brit and I say, I'm mad about my flat. Mm. Mm. And you immediately have this picture of somebody at the side of the road sweating over changing a tire. <laughs> I didn't right. say that. I just said that I was excited about my apartment. <laughs> same language. <laughs> same complete that's, misunderstanding. That's right. Or go to J- Japan and translate, I'm, I'm pulling your leg. Uh, you're climbing up the wall. <laughs> Translate literally. Sometimes a literal translation is a disaster. It's very difficult. The very thing you it? don't want to do. You exactly. want to get it over to the target language correctly. Yeah. But if we can set this as our standard, yeah. if we're reading Ephesians or, in this case, Colossians, yeah. uh, and uh, if we can say, I want to understand this yeah. the way the writer meant for it to be understood. What did he really, was he really thinking? And what was it the Colossians would need to have been understanding? If I can get in harmony with that, now I can go someplace. That's right. Now it's doing you good, isn't it? Otherwise it's it's simply confusing you. You're not getting much out of it, not much spiritual nourishment. That's right. If you're misunderstanding every word you're reading. That's exactly right. (laughs) So Colossae, uh, this was a a city in... uh, I guess we'd say Asia Minor nowadays, mm-hmm. or Turkey. Well, you mentioned uh, modern-day modern Turkey. The western yeah. side of the, yeah. in the Roman Empire. Uh, right there, right? In the area that uh, sometimes, uh, I guess we find it referred to in the scriptures as Asia. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So at that time. It's not the entirety of the continent yeah. of Asia, but right. that section. Where what Paul we now would call Asia Minor right. sometimes. Where yeah. Laodicea also was. And Laodicea was nearby. Right. I noticed that when yeah. I was looking. I, yeah. I had this map, and then yeah. just... Uh, Mm-hmm. Interesting to see the how close they were. Yeah. You have the other churches, these uh, six other churches that mm-hmm. we call the seven churches of Asia. That's out right. Of Revelation, the second and third yeah. chapters. Yeah. And they're all kind of yeah. located in that area yeah. over there. But uh, Paul writing then from prison, right? And yeah. about to die. I mean, not many years ahead of our time here, he was 
he was murdered by the Roman Empire. Yeah. Terrible. Very sad. Terrible stuff. Terrible yeah. martyrdom. Right. The, uh, well, uh, let's read. Let's see what we will okay. find. Uh, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. Verse 3. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and growing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God in truth. Verse 7. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. So another wonderful opening here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Paul has uh, such a, a gracious approach Mm. Uh, to his uh, coming to these people. Obviously, he, he honors and respects the Colossians as brethren. Uh, they're very uh, wonderful and valuable in his mm -hmm. sight. And uh, as he mentions the others, Timothy, uh, our brother, and uh, Epaphras, uh, our fellow servant. Yes. So I, I love his, his heart. It comes f through in his words. And definitely the word Father is God there, and 1,300 times in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Atheos the God, mm -hmm. the one God, is identified with the Father. Mm -hmm. That immediately strikes me. Then he speaks of God and Father of our Lord Jesus our Lord Christ. Jesus so Christ yes. It obviously is wrong to say that Lord Jesus Christ means God, uh, Jesus Christ. That would be possibly. two gods immediately, yeah. and everybody shrinks from that. Yeah, openly. Yeah. So that's Psalm 110, 1. The Lord says to my Lord, the second Lord is not God, expressly not deity. Right. Only one God and one Lord Messiah. Mm -hmm. Now we're talking who is the human being par excellence, the perfect human being, the good model for us. Uh, I love it here. Paul is talking about Christ. And he's talking about God. But uh, he, when he identifies Christ, he's mm -hmm. identifying him as the Christ, the Messiah, uh, and Jesus yeah. uh, as that Christ. Yeah. But when he's talking about God, he identifies him as the Father. Absolutely. And that, there's no question right. about that. Messiah Jesus is interesting. He, in, the later you go in his epistles, the more he emphasizes Messiah Jesus. Not just Jesus Christ, as, that, as though that's his family name. Right, right. But Messiah Jesus, mm -hmm. and everybody should go back always to Luke 2.11, where that Messiah was born, as the Lord Christ was yes, born. Yes, yes. People in that day didn't think that God got born, you see. <laughs> yes. That's not so hard. So forget yes. that. God wasn't born. No, this is the Lord Messiah. Yeah. He's the descendant of David. Now yeah. we're talking the Jewish environment of the New right. Testament, without which we really are at sea trying mm. to understand the book in terms of our own traditions. That's a mistake. Uh, I was just thinking, uh, as you were talking about, mm -hmm. uh, how the openings of these books uh, yes. are so wonderful. But they were rather problematic to me in my yes. earlier uh, <laughs> days as a... Yes as a, a good oneness fellow yeah. and uh, very dedicated in yeah. all of that. But yeah. the, these introductions to yes. the books by Paul, uh, this kind of language just didn't really work. We have Jesus, uh, yes. who I identified as, as being God. Yes. Jesus is being identified as the Lord, yes. not the Lord God, but the Lord Christ, yes. being identified as the Christ, the Messiah. Yes. But God, that's the Father. Yes. whom Jesus said in John 17 and 3. That's what you know. He's the only right, the true, only true God, God, right? is the Father. Yes, yeah, in, yeah. in our former days, we thought there were two gods in the God family. Oh, my Lord. Now, yeah, shrink yeah, from that. <laughs> That's polytheism. There aren't two gods. There's one God and one Adonis. Psalm 110. One. That psalm, you see, that verse is yet to burst upon the public. Mm, mm. I would recommend everybody look carefully at that and look at the second Hebrew word. The second Lord is not God. Mm. Somebody said nicely, uh, Dan, in this connection, the word Lord in Scripture does for God and the gardener. Ah, yes, a range, yes. right? The gardener <laughs> is Kyrie, <laughs> Yes. Lord, yes. Kyrios. And God is also Kyrios. Yes. Jesus is also Kyrios. But you have to be discerning here. Yes, yes. Nobody thought the gardener was God. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> should, should think then that the Lord Jesus is the Lord God Jesus. Literally. And we have the Literally. top scholars now. This uh, famous book by James Dunn, Did the First Christians Worship Jesus? Oh, one? yes. Yeah. And he's saying there, 
They're not telling us in the New Testament that Jesus is Yahweh, because heaven forbid, that makes two Yahwehs. <laughs> Jesus is representing Yahweh, yes, of course, perfectly, but he's not a second Yahweh. Mm. That mm. puts the Jews to fright and yeah. to flight. And it, it should put us all and to, it should to put fright. All <laughs> to flight and fright, right? <laughs> That's right. The Muslims equally um, are standing yeah. aghast yeah. at that notion. Yeah. It, it, only us uh, post-biblical, yes. post-Bible Gentile yes. folks could come up with these strange yeah, ideas I'm about there's two Yahwehs, but there's only one, and Jesus is Yahweh, except he's not, and uh, it's very, uh, very only only we Gentile folks could, could do that. Can manage that, right? <laughs> it's a tour de force. That's, that's it's right. very brilliant and, and fearfully complex. <laughs> that's right. so, so what's wrong with the, the creed of Jesus? You know, when they talk about the Apostles' Creed, yeah. which is fairly innocuous, but Jesus also is an apostle, Hebrews 3.1. Oh, that's right. That's right. Why would we think of doing away with the creed of Jesus in Mark 12.29? That doesn't make any sense that's to me. Right. You, you start with the creed of Jesus. That's right. But what we're, I think, exposing here, and I'm sure this will come up in, in the course of the letter, church members really don't seriously think that Jesus taught anything much. Mm. Somebody <laughs> said, Jesus was nice, but not smart. <laughs> Richard Hayes, you know, in Florida said, most people of Christian persuasion have not been particularly interested in what Jesus said. Mm, mm. These are huge lessons for mm, the public. Mm. Back to the words of Jesus, and of course Paul is reflecting the words of Jesus as a perfect representative wow. of, of Jesus. Yeah. That's easy. Well, I love, uh, I love Paul's heart, his attitude, his honor for the saints mm -hmm. and for his fellow workers. Very and. Much so. uh, and certainly his honor for, for God, yes. the Lord God, yes. and uh, the Lord yes. Jesus Christ. Whom he defines, you point yes. out. I mean, you start the book, don't you, by let's get our definitions correct. <laughs> this is the place Lord to God begin. God the Father, right? <laughs> and we mean Lord Messiah, we don't mean a second Lord that's God. That's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> why, if that's where uh, Paul begins his letters, and he does, rather <laughs> repeatedly, yes, uh, why so shouldn't we begin our understanding that's of right. God and our, our address right. with one another? Uh, one of the things that I, uh, I learned as a... Uh, as a oneness person, it kind of got me thinking, mm. is uh, if we think that Jesus is God, mm. you know, and, and if you if you hear a, a, a good oneness person, mm -hmm. myself included mm -hmm. at one time, uh, talking about Jesus, I'm going to say, oh yes, Jesus is God, is and I'm, God. that's my language. Yes. But when I begin to read Paul's language, it doesn't, quite work. It doesn't work that no. way. And Jesus turns out to be yeah. the Christ, yes. uh, the yes. Messiah. Yes. The, uh, the Son of David. Yeah, the Son of David. Nobody thought the Son of David would be older than David. I mean, that, that's really a stretch, isn't it? How yeah. difficult that is. Yeah. And why not Mary had a baby, you know, yeah. supernaturally, <laughs> How but hard didn't is take that? in yeah, somebody right. reducing himself to a fetus. Which is another it's whole other matter. That's right. it's just yes. <laughs> very, very difficult. That's right. So if we're reading Paul and we want to understand uh, Paul as Paul meant to be mm -hmm. understood mm -hmm. and as the Colossians would have understood him, mm -hmm. we hope, uh, then we're going to know that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, yes, and, that, and that God is the Father. And, absolutely. And we can go with that. Yes. Now we can go. This and makes sense. Our, of our Lord, we have to remind our listeners that Yahweh never has a uh, possessive pronoun. You never can speak of my Yahweh or <laughs> yeah. our Yahweh. That's a language impossibility. Right. So God is Yahweh, mm -hmm. just Kyrios, yeah. Yahweh. Jehovah may yeah. even be right, doesn't matter. It's the, the sacred name. Yeah. But our Lord is my Lord of Psalm 110. Yes, yes. Our Lord and Messiah. Yes. This wasn't a problem when Paul wrote this. That's right. But I think he's anticipating it by emphasizing his definitions early on. Well, as we noted in our uh, reading of Ephesians and uh, the passage of Ephesians 4 and 5 yes. and 6, how that uh, Paul is saying there is one Lord, yes. but he's talking about one Lord Messiah, of one course. Lord King, Absolutely. one Lord uh, that God has made Lord exactly. to be the, uh, uh, yes. the Acts 2.36. Yes. Uh, and then there is, in addition to that, verse 6, yes. the one Lord God. And, yes. Uh, so I love that. Yes. But, Actually, uh, in First Corinthians 8, it's the other way around. It's the one God, the Father, and then the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. But you're right. There are two ones there. <laughs> there is right. a one God, and there's yeah. also a one Jesus That's alongside. Right. That's right. But never to, at the expense of destroying the great creed of yeah. Israel, the yeah. Shema. That's right. Yeah. Yes. Verse 9. Yeah. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, mm -hmm. asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, mm. so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Mm -hmm. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father, 
who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us mm -hmm. to the kingdom of his beloved Son, mm -hmm. in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. It's marvelous, isn't 14. it? 14. I love this, this particular See, yeah. run of things because yes. early in his letter, this is what strikes me about yeah. it. Early in his letter, Paul is, um, is talking about him being filled yeah. with the knowledge mm -hmm. of, uh, of God. Mm -hmm. He wants him to be filled with all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Yes. So it's interesting. Uh, his very first concern, at least, that he's going to bring to bear here is them being, not just having some, uh, not that there would just be some knowledge in their lives of God, but being filled with the knowledge Absolutely. of God Absolutely. and filled with the, with the yes. wisdom and understanding. And look at the result of that in verse 11. Mm -hmm. Strengthened with all power. See, people make this constant dichotomy. Well, I don't need knowledge. That, that, that's <laughs> not. What I need is the power. The power. Wait a minute, they're connected here. Yes. They're yes. cutting off the very source that yes. they really want to have in their lives. True knowledge yes. brings true Power with yes. God. True you, you get this awful dichotomy between doctrine and, and, and Christian living. Yes, yes, Which yes. are always inseparable in yes. Scripture. This yes. awful, boring thing, doctrine. We, well, we don't need that. <laughs> this is head knowledge. Yes, this is dull yes. intellectual knowledge mm -hmm. as distinct from the real thing. Right. You see, which is power. But they're not disconnected in Paul. They're always linked. So the better it. doctrine you've got, the more likely you're to have the, the Christian yeah. living the walk, aren't you? That yes. makes perfect sense to me. I love it. And... Uh, so those are some of my favorite verses. Yeah. Verse 11, I, I think about it often. Uh, yes. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm. but this is all uh, about uh, bearing fruit that's pleasing me. How can yes. we do that without the knowledge of that's that? That's right. You can't do what you don't know to that's do. That's right. And you can't have good, clear faith in something you don't understand. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it seems no, to me. That, absolutely right. And that, that takes this whole sweep of the first chapter. In verse 5, we have the hope laid up for us. Mm -hmm. First Peter 1 Peter 1.4 speaks of the inheritance reserved for yeah. you. And that's mm -hmm. a whole clear concept. The reward, Matthew 6, 1, if you don't pray correctly, you have no reward. Present mm -hmm. tense. The reward is stored up as treasure now, ready to be revealed, however, at the second coming. At the second coming, Ah, yes. mm -hmm. the one second coming, the parousia of Jesus, yes. which was at 1914, <laughs> yes. with great respect to our Jehovah's Witness friends, it's in the future, a single second coming. All of that, then, is, is taken for granted by Paul, by the way. He doesn't have to elaborate all that. Mm -hmm. But in the present age, you do have to, because of the confusion that has attacked sure. and set the churches with all their different traditions. Inheritance is a key word too, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Inheritance of the kingdom. Immediately you read the word inheritance, you think the inheritance promised to Abraham, promised to Jesus, by Jesus, and so on. The inheritance of the kingdom of God yeah. on the earth to be established right. fully when Christ returns. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be a prince and a ruler, a supervisor, and take responsibility in that kingdom. All that has to be said mm -hmm. today, where it didn't have to be said in great detail on mm -hmm. every page mm -hmm. here, but it's all implied. But it's all there. It's, it's all one there. Yeah, and you absolutely. want that one. Yeah. I love this, then, uh, this contrast. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. He talks about the inheritance of saints, yes. of the saints in light. Light, light so that's wonderful. Wow. But then uh, he has delivered us from the, the domain of darkness and transferred yeah. us to the kingdom of his beloved that's Son. Right. And as we've spoken before, I think there, we already have a relationship Absolutely. with that future kingdom. No question. Our, our citizenship is in heaven. Our, uh, you know, it's a wonderful Where Jesus is. Yeah. Surely. We're sitting in heaven now. If you want to talk about going to heaven, yeah. we're supposed to be sitting Ephesians with Jesus. The first chapter, but he's right. coming back, so if you want to be where Jesus is in the future, you don't want to be in heaven. Because right. Jesus won't be there. Forget that one. No, he's coming back to the earth. It's not a drive-through. It's a permanent... He takes a one, He's coming back to, one -way to ticket, get this earth fixed. A one-way ticket to down, the yeah. earth. That's if right. you don't have that, you don't have the throne of David, and you've mm. lost the whole of the plan of yeah. God succeeding in making the world mm. where it was supposed to be, right? I think that's wonderful. But in all, it is the kingdom of his beloved son. Yes. And we then are joint heirs with Christ, the yes. Romans 8, 17 thing. Marvelous. And uh, so here yeah. we are, joint heirs, heirs, uh, oh, yeah. saints in light, yeah. and we've already been delivered, yes. even though we're still here in this environment, yes. but, but we've already been delivered to light from yes. the darkness. Through the spirit, and the down payment of that future Absolutely. coming. Absolutely. It's wonderful. It breaks your heart watching the news. 
understand these days. You know, mm. people, such tragic things happening. People mm. killing each other mindlessly. Mm. In that kingdom, we are going to help Jesus put an end to that. Mm. You don't mm. build a tank to kill somebody. Yeah, that's that's right. just, you don't get a gun Terrible. and shoot you. Yes. You just don't do that. We don't have the power to stop that now. That's right. But that's we're going right. to have that power when Jesus comes back. And uh, we look forward to that day. Absolutely. But in the meantime, we, we must be in preparation. Yes. And that means... Being saints in light, Indeed. <laughs> uh, yeah. being uh, uh, realizing we've been delivered from this darkness, and we should eschew the darkness and, and find light. And, yeah. and and surely, the word of God is light. It, it brings light and understanding. And what else is? If this isn't it, what is? Yeah, you know, find me a say. better philosophy right. of life than That's this. Right. This is very compelling because it's based on the resurrection. And if the resurrection isn't true, Paul was a liar. He's the first to say that. I'm a liar, he says. If Jesus is not alive, I am a liar. <laughs> Forget it. Go and, and do something and it's all useful. Over. Yeah, it's all right. over. That's right. That's if it's true, however, it's the only message that makes any sense at all. So I like this uh, last comment in verse 14, he, but he's, uh, he's talked about his beloved son mm -hmm. in whom mm -hmm. we have redemption. Yes. The forgiveness of sins. So I, I think I love that. It's, Brought back. Uh, that's, that's a blood thing. He gives his blood then. That's a high price, isn't it? to rescue us from the slave market. That's the image there. It's very powerful. I like this, uh, this next uh, part, mm. Anthony, and I like the way this um, uh, translation yes. uh, heads this up. It says the preeminence of Christ, my, my because I think they're mm. picking up on this correctly. Uh, so many times uh, this next uh, uh, mm -hmm. bit of uh, Paul's writing is often, I think, misconstrued, Absolutely. misunderstood. Yes. Uh, and uh, but they're on the right track. It, it, he's not talking about the pre-existence no. of Christ. He's no. talking about the preeminence yes. of Christ, right. and that's a good good beginning. Absolutely. So, yes. So verse uh, fifteen, mm -hmm. he is the image of the invisible God. Speaking of this son, mm -hmm. okay, he's the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Mm -hmm. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. Mm -hmm. And he is before all things, mm -hmm. and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead that in everything he might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. So this is very powerful, isn't it? Oh, it's marvelous, yes. It's been mistranslated here and there. Yes, yes. For example, in verse 16, if one reads 15, one should keep one's feet on the ground and one's head straight. Right. He's the image of the invisible God. Right. That's to say, he's the visible image. We're not talking about a, a pre-existing, uh, invisible Jesus here. Yes, yes. Except in the mind of God. No. We can always allow for that. Of course. But he's the visible image. Adam was also the image of God. So nobody reading this thinks that Jesus is other than man. Because right. he's the image. Well, Adam was the image of God. Right. Mankind is the image of God. Nobody thinks we're all God, unless yes. you're into <laughs> paganism heavy. Yes, right. So you start with that then, in 15. He's the image of the invisible God, firstborn of, of all creation. Oh, he yes, is yes. the preeminent one in creation. No right. question about that. Right. And then in verse 16, we, in, in my translation of the New Testament, I, I've, I've been helped by n numbers of Greek grammarians. They point out that by him isn't right. You see, it's mm -hmm. in him, n, mm -hmm. the preposition n. Mm -hmm. And James Down rightly says, in him, in intention, mm. with Jesus in mind, uh, Moulton Milligan called this a causal, mm -hmm. C-A-U-S-A-L, causal N, not by, as though he's the creator of everything. That, that's very yeah. unfair because God rested on the seventh day, not Jesus. And if Jesus <laughs> was done doing all the work, that's, that's very silly. <laughs> no, God is the creator of all things in Genesis. Right. That's quite clear. But with him in intention, all things were created. That could be a reference to the first creation, mm -hmm. in him. With him in intention, Dr. James Dunn, mm -hmm. the causal end, mm -hmm. with him in mind, everything was created by God. That's a divine passive, mm -hmm. created by God, implied. And then he changes tense in the middle of the verse. He then says that all things have been, that's a different verb tense there, mm -hmm. meaning have been and are being created in the new creation yes. through yes. Jesus. I get it. 
Don't you, don't you think fun. that uh, uh, perhaps uh, where people get a bit derailed yes. and begin to go off from the business of preeminence yes. and instead begin to get into yes. an idea which isn't in these scriptures, yes. and that is uh, pre-existence, yes. Yes. two different things entirely. Yes, indeed. Uh, but where they begin to derail is that uh, they begin to they, they lose sight of we're talking about a new creation absolutely in, uh, yes. in what Paul's talking we're not talking about the Genesis creation no. all of this not we're many. talking no. about no, no, no. Uh, we're sure. talking about the sure. creation that is called absolutely. the new creation absolutely. in Christ Jesus that's right and, uh, if we could allow for him being in the mind of God in the original creation the, uh, in the original creation that part of it's fine if you, all the angels and so on he Sorry. always has Jesus in mind but Right there in the middle, he changes tenses and he has all things in the new creation stand created right. through Jesus right, right now. That's right. a different thing. Right. So that is a subtlety in the, in the translation there that many translations miss. I mean, you, you just read there, by him all things are created. Well, come on. Of course. This Obviously, is, yeah. then Jesus was like, oh, we now have two creators and all things in Isaiah 44, 24 were made by God totally alone. So now our brain is in a fog. Well, we, yeah, We've right. got God alone, and yet Jesus... This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. We don't need that. <laughs> Absolutely Provided not. we maintain the, the human visible image, that's right. which is the second yeah. Adam, right? Yeah. Well, and as, uh, as we've noted before, if you say that someone is the image of yes. someone, that's right. you're by definition saying that one that's the image it's is not, not the someone. You, know, you, know, you, can, you can look at an image of someone, uh, whether it's a photograph, whether it's a picture. Yeah. In this, this photograph, the yeah. picture, or, the, or perhaps the sculptor, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the sculpting, is uh, will, will remind you or give you sure. an, uh, some insight into right. what that other being is like, but it's not it's not the actual being himself. Jesus is an image of God. That's great, but it proves then to me, That's right. by definition, that yeah. Jesus is not. And back to yeah. Adam, he's the image of God. All human beings are surely in the surely. image of God. That Absolutely, nobody is bold enough to say that Adam was God. I don't <laughs> think they would say that. We don't say that we are God. No, no. But why would with Jesus? It's the same okay. language. He's the ultimate perfect image of God, sinless image of God. So I think, too, uh, you begin to pick up that we're talking about new creation yes, here and not certainly. the Genesis creation. Certainly. When you look at Paul's example mm -hmm. of the kinds of things he's referring to in this creation, he's mm -hmm. saying whether they are, now he's going to give you examples. Yes of what this yes. is about, right whether authority. thrones yes. or dominions or rulers sure. or authorities, sure. these kinds of things, yeah. all things in the sense of... Authorities, yes. rather than the birds and the bees right. and, and the created and the <laughs> right. and all that. Not yeah. the fishes in the stream, well, but, but that, authorities. Yes. Uh, right. This, uh, right. And Jesus, uh -huh. in the, all of these things yeah. are in motion and being created in the yes. new creation. Yeah. for Jesus yeah. and, and for for those who will be his people. Yeah, and through him, right. Yeah. I like verse 18 particularly because it says there in the second half of 18, so that he himself will come to have first place. Well, now, if you've already got first place from eternity, <laughs> how right. can you come to have first place? You haven't got a promotion in that system. If Jesus yes. is already co-equal, co-eternal mm. God, he actually winds up being rather worse off at the end of the process than he was at the beginning. <laughs> That's right. But Paul says the opposite. He says he came to be promoted to first place. Yes, yes, yes. He's, he's, he's gaining something he's gaining. he did not have. The whole epic is a, a terrible failure yeah. if Jesus really goes back to a position rather worse what off. What he already he, was yeah. or something. <laughs> yes. Doesn't make any sense. It makes no sense at all. Yeah. So uh, I think if if uh, if the Bible student then yes. or the, uh, the reader will simply remember there is uh, a Genesis creation yes. we're aware of that yes. but God did that one yes. uh, He didn't Certainly. have any help in doing that That's right uh, the That's right. Isaiah forty four twenty four yes. that you Definitely. mentioned yes. but the new creation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm is another story, Absolutely. an entirely different picture. God is now in the business of a new creation, and this new creation is with Jesus, yes. and he is going to be the preeminent one in the new creation. And guess what? I think the new creation is going to outstrip. It's going to go on forever. This is the Aeonian uh, kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. There is no end in sight for this one. That's right. the, the one uh, back there in the beginning... Uh, only lasted failed. for a while and yeah. failed, yes, yeah. until this yeah. new one comes into being. This, this is the biblical narrative. What if we become part of an epic story, a narrative yes. that, yes. Fail, that shows the failed Adam 
Mm. So repentance then is doing the opposite of what Adam did, right? He <laughs> lost rulership over the world. Yes, yes. Jesus regained it, and yes. we're invited now to be of that new that's Adam right. gang. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Not the old Adam yeah. gang. And yeah. 17 is mistranslated. He's before all things. They're playing on the ambiguity of yes. protos in the Greek, which can mean either first in time or superiority in rank. Right. So right. you make a decision there, depending yes. on what you think it should yes, be. Yes. But before is ambiguous in English. So mm. let's say he's preeminent one. I'm allowing, I think, as, as we mentioned just now, I'm allowing for the first creation to be there in him in intention, the first half yes, of verse 16. Yes, of course. I can see that. We'll see that to our friends. All the angels were created with Jesus in mind. Surely. Even though Jesus wasn't yet born because he came in the fullness of time. That's right. That's beginning to make better sense to me, although yeah. I'd say for mu you know, much of my life, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I had to learn this from good people who took the time to explain these things to us. <laughs> but, um, but I like this. So... Uh, uh, we're talking about who comes first, not yes. necessarily in terms of time, yes. but who comes first in yes. terms of importance, significance, That's right. preeminence. That's right. And uh, and Jesus yes. does really come first in terms of time in the new creation as well. Oh, he exactly. is the first. No He's question. the firstborn from the right. dead. He's the first right. to rise from the dead to an unending Absolutely. life. Uh, I like that. Isn't that yeah. The only one to, be, to have been resurrected to immortality. Yes. Others were resuscitated, you know, for a short sure. time. No, that's beautiful that in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul has to come against the idea of reversing the order. He says the first Adam came first, right? Yeah, that's right. And the second Adam, guess what, came second. The last <laughs> Adam, let's get the order right. That's right. Although, as you say, Jesus is preeminent from the beginning. In, in, in God's mind, great in plan. In the plan of God. Yeah, looking I love at the that. sweep of yeah, God. Yeah, surely. That's, that's right. It takes some thinking there, doesn't it? This yeah, Bible sure. It's challenging. Yeah. But once you begin to think about that, yeah. then it, it's not too hard. Uh, not so hard. You begin to realize, hey, this isn't so complicated. Right. It's only complicated when you try to get yeah. two doing the creation in Genesis, where one said, I did it by myself. Exactly. I, I did it alone. And I had no help. <laughs> You know, not to overlook that, but we're going to have two of them back there doing that. That makes yeah, no that's sense. Too but now here we have God yeah. in a new creation. Yes. You might say God worked by Adam in mm. bringing forth the first creation. Mm, was no a, he played a role in that. Yes. But wow. God is working now in Jesus Christ in bringing forth that's the right. new creation. Yeah. We're lucky to be yeah. living though beyond the ascension of Jesus, aren't we? We could have been living before the time of Christ. Yes, the, yes. the plan has advanced chronologically yes, yes, enough to include the resurrection that has happened yeah. And now we're waiting for the second coming, that's and right. sometimes mistaken is setting dates in an idiotic <laughs> way. Don't need to do that. Until then, the gospel yeah. must go out, the gospel of the kingdom. I think there's no question that uh, has the new creation oh, essentially no primarily oh, in mind. Absolutely. And, uh, absolutely. And he's talking about new creation yes. stuff. Oh, absolutely. Powers, yes. kingdoms, yes. rulings, and all that. That's the yes. new creation. Oh, no, no question. Clearly. No, uh, there's no question no, about no that. No question. He's not talking about creating fish and streams. No, no. Or, in verse 20, you know, flowers your in point the field, is but, Right. Verse 20, it's through uh, him to reconcile. It's about reconciling man to God. We know that's only possible in right. Messiah Jesus, right? right. Great. And these are things on the earth or in heaven. Again, the whole structure of authority yes. is reconciled yeah. in Jesus. Yes. So you're absolutely right there. I, I, what I've done in 16 is to concede to our friends that if you like the first half of 16, <laughs> yes. with him in intention, mm -hmm. the whole creation from the start was made. Surely. But the new creation is the emphasis here. There's no absolutely. question about that. Absolutely. And when he gets around to ex explaining what he means, his yes. examples are drawn from new creation. So absolutely. That's wonderful. But uh, yeah, I like the last uh, mm. line, the last part of this whole thing, too, yeah. in, uh, where he says, making peace by the blood of his cross. Yes. I think we should never lose sight of that. Sometimes mm. I see folks who are, mm. are uh, saying, well, you know, I don't know that Jesus really died for people, that, uh, people's sins. Actually, the it's scriptural view is very clear on this. Mm. There's no question about mm. it. Uh, in our place. In absolutely. Our place. Absolutely. And absolutely. Don't lose that and say, well, it was just a good example. Not at all. It was certainly yeah. that, too. It's, no. it's very good example sure. to die asking for your enemies yeah. to be forgiven. But, but for the grace of God, we're on that cross That's under right. the curse of sin. That's, That's right. essential to mention right. that, yes. And, and the key to all of that is what it meant to God. Yes. If, if yes. God accepted right. this sacrifice yes. on the part of Jesus Christ, That's right. For the sake of others, which is us, That's an then point. who are we to stand in the face of God and tell him he can't do that? 
Who yeah. are we to say a mere man yeah. is not a sufficient sacrifice? Oh, my land, yes. Who makes the rules here, please? Uh, isn't that one of the most terrible things anybody can do? A mere cannot, man? A man cannot do this. Excuse he can't, me, he can't be our savior. <laughs> without a human father, sinless? Yes, yes. And they say, oh, a mere man. Wait a minute, that's just the devil disparaging no. what God can do with a man if God chooses. That's right. That's exactly so let God be God. Let him make the decisions. Exactly Don't come along with your philosophy and, and impose that upon that's the text right. and turn it into chaos. Yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty awful, I think. Uh, very bad. Uh, Jesus was a true man, Absolutely. but to say he was a mere man is a rather What's exaggerated. Mere man, exactly. <laughs> yeah, what does that I mean? I love that. We I don't, don't love it, but that fog language is, is <laughs> the right. bane of all poor theology. That's right? Right. So many yeah. words that are foggy, you don't yeah. know what being said how, at all. How many men are uh, actually have God as their true father? Oh. Uh, he does. Good question. How many were born of a virgin? He was. He was. Uh, how many then, by the power yes. and glory of God, are called right. to lead the yes. rest of humanity? Not many. So <laughs> I, think it, right. I think it comes down to him, really. It's, it and we can is. provoke our good friends out there in the churches to think about this. What they probably don't know because they haven't bothered to study it <laughs> is that they're sitting in a system which says, and I quote, that Jesus is man, but not Amen. Oh, my land, yeah. Are they aware of that? If so, are they complaining to the pastor? Yeah. Wait a minute. What is, it, what is it we've inherited? Preach on this, pastor. This, this is pretty Tell awful. us why yeah. Jesus is man oh, my in goodness. the genetics and not amen. Yeah. We have to have some whistleblowing, some yeah. consumer, consumer activism. Mm -hmm. We have to have some consumer activism going here. Mm -hmm. We acknowledge this on the news, don't we? <laughs> yes. All the time. That's right. We're that's busy right. finding out the faults of the president or whatever. That's right. <laughs> why aren't we doing this that's in right. the theological that's realm? That's right. That's right. Well. It would be healthy for us if we Very could begin nice. to realize that, that it's sure. appropriate to question some of these things. Uh, we should question them. Uh, yes. Some of the church traditions, uh, some of these things that are taken, the taken for granted. As, taken as you, for granted, I love that. It's a good phrase. Yeah, uh, yes, no, absolutely. Um, we should get the, con I think the phrase is get the conversation going. Right now, the conversation is gone, shh. Yes. Um, what is the creed of yes. Jesus in Mark 12, 28? Yes. That's an embarrassing question. Yes. Since the church doesn't seem to recognize yes. it. Wait a minute, I, you're a Christian now, but yes. you don't believe in the teachings of it. What are we getting at here? Yes. Something yes. huge. Yes. Supersized, yes. right? That's amazing. Well, if you think about it, uh, I think the best uh, defense of some of these ideas, yes. uh, uh, and the idea that God is multiple persons, yes. he's two or three different ones, as yes. but somehow he's one. Yes. All that, the best defense of it is, don't, let's not talk about it. Exactly. <laughs> don't bring it up and That's don't right. question That's it, whatever right. you do. And, right. uh, don't expose so, it. Right. But when right. you say don't talk about something and don't question it, that immediately causes me to say, well, what are you concerned exactly. about? You know, what if maybe we should be questioning that. Could that this. be the elephant in, in the crime scene? Right? <laughs> it may be so. I think so. That's it's right. what you don't say often that is the biggest fraud, right? Yeah, what you right. actually don't say. That's right. Well, I invite all pastors around the land to say, our Jesus is man, but not a man. Yeah. That's the legacy of Trinitarian it's, doctrine. And it's a terrible idea. And most of the public yeah. will say, well, we don't believe that. Well, good for you. Yeah. Search it out. Yeah. Ask your pastor to preach something like... Your pastor he may help you to man. understand that the man you do science. believe it. <laughs> yes. That's right. And you shouldn't. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. Verse 21. And you who once were alienated and hostile in mind, yep. doing evil deeds, he is now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless and above reproach before him. Verse 23, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. So he's saying, uh, you were once alienated, mm. hostile in your minds. Mm. He has reconciled us in the body of his flesh by that death. Yes. So once again, uh, Jesus did die for us, and yes. he did die for our sins. His blood uh, is, does mean that in the mind of God, yes. and that's all that counts. Uh, I've heard people say you couldn't do it. Actually, that's God's business. If right. God chose to accept uh, his son mm -hmm. and what his son did for mm -hmm. the benefit of, of the friends of his son, his, mm -hmm. his people, mm -hmm. then that's God's business. And, the, yes. he, and it's well, I think. I like this too. Um, mm -hmm. In uh, verse 23, uh, Paul's conditional. Uh, he says, if indeed you continue in the faith, yes. stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel mm -hmm. that you heard. This conditional language reminds me mm -hmm. of uh, the writer of Hebrews mm -hmm. and his uh, cautioning uh, to the people 
uh, that you want to hold to the faith and, and not uh, not allow yourself yeah. to move away from it. What you're saying is this is not a once saved, always saved text. That's right. All of this wonderful stuff that you've just been reading is true if, yeah. on condition that you yeah. don't give up. Yeah. Right? So the idea that you couldn't possibly give up in God's plan, that's an impossibility, yeah. fails on that text. That's right. There's an if here. And, so, uh, and that, and that if is in our Bible, and it's uh, yeah, the Apostle place, Paul right. that wrote it. You yeah. take out the if, and you yeah. have actually meddled with the Scriptures, haven't you? You've meddled with the, the truth and the matter. Yeah. Uh, the classic one there is in Romans 11, in 22. Behold, the kindness and severity of God, this is Romans 11, to those who fell, severity, but to you, God's kindness. If, if there you is, yes. continue in God's kindness, otherwise you, mm -hmm. Christians, are going to be cut off. That needs some thinking about, doesn't it? Absolutely. Well, we can't do justice to the Scriptures or to God yeah. and ignore yeah. the words that are, that are there. So uh, Paul's the one that wrote the word if, mm -hmm. <laughs> or, uh, you know, a simple two-letter word, negli, well, three letters, I yes. guess, eon yes, yes. In, uh, exactly. in the Greek. Exactly. But, uh, yes. but he's, he's the one that provides this. If you mm -hmm. continue, mm -hmm. if you do this, if you hold and you don't abandon this faith. So uh, that's, right. that's very good. And Verse 24. Mm -hmm. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is the church, mm -hmm. of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. Marvelous. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, mm. which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom mm. that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. Wow. I like that Good a lot. Example. Yeah, I like it a lot. Again, these innocent words, the hope of glory, hope of the glory of the kingdom mm -hmm. coming when Christ yes, returns. Yes, yes. Messiah in you, and that's Messiah, not some vague Jesus undefined. Yes, yes. Messiah, highly, high tension words, mystery, mm -hmm. mystery of the gospel of the kingdom. Paul mm -hmm. hasn't forgotten about Jesus. Yes, yes. Paul is following Jesus. Right. And yet churches tend to think that Paul is the inventor of Christianity. That's patently false. <laughs> He's only preaching and extending and developing the gospel as Jesus himself preached it. Exactly. All of these things have to be said, though. I find that folk have not been told this in church very mm, clearly. Mm. And so defining the words is very important. The word here, he mentioned the word word, didn't he, in the, in the section, I think, in verse 25. Carrying out the preaching of the word of God. That's not a synonym just for the Bible. Mm -hmm. it's not just preaching the Bible in a mm -hmm. vague sense. Preaching the word of the gospel of the kingdom, Matthew yes. 13, 19. We must insist that these words be defined for mm. the children's sake, yes. to make sense of yeah. the document, otherwise the document is That's hopelessly right. difficult. Right. And defined, again, according to what the writer's intention was. Of course. Not according to how someone yeah. may define it now or some denomination right. may define something. Right. But instead, how did That's Paul right. think of this matter? How did he define it's these very things? Very Jewish context. Yeah. And you've got to look at the bigger picture of Paul's writing.